I'm just so impressed by these tires. Look at that. I mean, yeah, there's still some slip, but I mean, you can carry a little speed, still have control over your vehicle. Welcome back. I'm Tedward. Welcome to Maine and welcome back to my Honda Civic Type R. I do have a set of snow tires. We've got an 18 inch wheel from Tire Rack and a Bridgestone Blazak WS90. And we've got a little bit of snow, nothing crazy, just a little powder. And it's probably going to freeze and get yucky later on. But for now, I figured why not just take a little therapy snow drive because I need to occupy myself. My sister actually just had a baby and that's why I'm up here and we're waiting for the, the okay to go meet my new niece. So I'm pretty psyched about that uh, new addition to the family. <laughs> Very exciting. And uh, I figure why don't we just go take this around the neighborhood and see how she handles. Now the, the Type R, man, this is just like the worst winter car. Not because it'll get stuck, but just because it's completely not the purpose of this particular Civic. A regular Civic or an SI, sure, perfect. This car, it's just kind of stiff. A lot of, um, a lot of what this car is intended to do just makes it boring in the winter. Again, it's not because it'll get stuck or it won't work. It's just that, you know, if you've got a winter car, one of the things that made like my E92 M3 so fun in the snow was because it was rear wheel drive and a V8 and you got to rev it out and it was a blast. Now, this doesn't even have a handbrake. You've got one of those silly electric little tabs that you pull and then that sets the parking brake. So you can't even do any fun little slidey things in it. But, um, you know, clearing off the car by hand right now because I left my snow brush in my Lexus. And you're probably like, hey man, you drove up to Maine with a snowstorm coming in the Civic and an expired, <laughs> and an expired inspection sticker. Um, what's the deal? Well, the Lexus has encountered some problems. So I guess even if you buy a brand new car, you may not be completely devoid of issues, which is, I suppose, why they have a Lemon Law. But we are trading out of it. it uh, Going to have another GX460, which hopefully does not have driveline vibration issues. We've replaced the wheels and tires multiple times, um, to my consternation. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Not going to get emotional about it. There are more important things to worry about right now than my Lexus. That is a first world problem if there ever was one. But I am fortunate enough to have used this in the winter last year. So that just means that I am winter ready. This was a very sort of inefficient snow clearing operation. And I don't really care about the hood so much when I'm clearing this off because that's all PPF. But when you see it against white snow, championship white, this car could not look more beige. Your eyes do not deceive you if you're looking at this car right now and saying that is not a white car. No, it really isn't. Championship white is a very strange color. And until you put it up next to white, you really don't grasp how not white it is, how off white it is. And I'm really, also, I'm not, I'm not grabbing or, or, or touching the paint here. I'm just lightly addressing the snow and whatever sticks to it is gonna go. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get this out for a drive. And my Tedward sticker prominently on the left, if you want one of those, there's a little store link in the description and you can go pick one up yourself. And maybe, uh, I guess I should have the keys to this. Apparently I don't. Okay, much better. Let's jump in. Adidas are getting awfully snowy, man. I was, I was, I was genuinely not prepared for this. Oh yeah, so <laughs> one of the bummers about this Civic in the snow. No heated seats, no heated steering wheel. Again, first world problems. But when you've had them, like my Lexus has heated seats and a heated steering wheel. It's really nice, what a luxury. You don't really need to wear gloves. You can just enjoy yourself. You just jump in and go. And <laughs> this shift knob, it's the, like my favorite shifter in the world until it's the winter. And then it's very cold and relatively unpleasant. But like I said, this is really fluffy stuff. So this is like easy stuff to kind of just toss around, not a big deal. There we go. All right, we do have our front defroster here, our rear and mirror defrosters, very helpful. I like mirror defrosters. Visibility is a wonderful thing in the snow. I was just thinking how weird it is that 
there's going to be a video that I can show my niece and be like, yeah, this was like the day you were born. This is what it looked like when you were born. Try not to get too sappy here. Maybe I'll make a little one for her that's just for her and not published. I drive hyper defensively when I'm in the snow. Like, I, I don't, you know, I could have gone there. I've got plenty of grip, plenty of room, but just in case something goes awry with that truck, I'm just gonna give us extra space. Even in the cold though, this transmission works really well, which is a delight because it is very frustrating when you get a car that is only happy when it's like fully up to temp. That's a tricky daily proposition to have. And it's not unfounded. A lot of cars, my 350Z, granted it had a lot of miles on it, but um, sometimes you get into cars and that first one, two shift are just not gonna happen until the transmission's fully warmed up. Those are those types of things where it's fine once in a while, but if you've gotta drive the car every day, it can get a little bit frustrating. Oh, look at all the plows out to play. This is great. Thought about going there, but made the decision a little late and uh, late decisions in the snow mean <laughs> you're not making the decision. We'll go up this way. Look at that. Only a little understeer if I add throttle and that's primarily because of that limited slip differential. It's incredible how much slip Honda allows their cars to get on the traction control, which I appreciate. That's good to me because when you completely cut power at the slightest hint of slip, especially in the snow, that doesn't do you any good because you need to be able to evacuate the tread of the snow so it's not just clumped up on there and becoming a slick, an icy slick. But you also just kind of have to claw away at the snow a little bit. Like, yes, you don't want to be driving the drive wheels at you know 60 miles an hour while you're standing still that's not going to get you anywhere but you do need some level of slip to make things happen i can feel traction sorry um stability control really kind of stepping in with those rear brakes so actually if we can turn that off and it's not fully off sorry about this fan too loud. Wow, this is a 15 mile an hour school zone. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Okay, we shall adhere. But Honda's traction and uh, slip control does just wonders to allow. I'm gonna get into the thicker stuff just so we can like, you know, watch it climb a hill. Yeah, man. WS 90s, I was just driving these same tires on Dana's Volvo C30 the other day, and they are just a miracle. They <laughs> they really do some work. They're phenomenal snow tires. Let's see if we still have access to our fluid. All right. Doing the job pretty good. That's all I wanted. It's so weird. I, I Apparently, I've been speeding in that school zone doing 20. It's a 15. That's so weird. I thought all school zones were 20s. You can hear it, that, the rear brakes. That's, that's sending power uh, uh, braking force to those rear calipers to avoid slip. So in order to get traction control fully, fully off on this car, you do have to do a bit of a pedal dance. And by pedal dance, I mean, when you start the car, you've got to do like a little sequence, like on a video game controller, like a cheat code, basically like brake, brake, parking brake, on, off, on, off, this whole thing. And then you can get that to do that. Subaru BRZ is the same way. And it's kind of just an insurance policy, I think for the automakers to be like, look, we know you think you're smart. We know you think you want your traction off. We know that you keep crashing your cars <laughs> every time you do it. So they actually just make an extra stage. So even on like a Subaru BRZ, everyone's like, no, 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 come on. You just hold it longer and then it gives you extra lights. Well, that, that's true, that is factual, but 
it is still not, in fact, off, and you do have to do a pedal dance. I'm not lying to you. That is a real thing. We have tested it out. All right, we'll get into these brakes early. Let's see how this fella handles that. Great. He's got his big four-wheel drive truck. I've got my front-wheel drive Civic on the correct rubber. This is great. And you can hear it intervening on me, but like what's impressive is just that there is still a lot of like mechanical grip from these tires. So no hesitation recommending Blizzax. These are not sponsored tires. I have done some Bridgestone events, but I paid for these ones. Um, I like them, so I'll be calling them for my next set, I think, <laughs> because I'm happy to sing the praises on these things. Now, I've had other snow tires. I had a Redestein Windtrack Pro, which was the tire that I used on my, my M3, and I do love those tires. They're a good tire, and they're a more fun tire just in cold weather. They're not as good at getting you and digging you out of a snowy hole, but they are good at being a good winter and cold weather tire, which is honestly mostly what I use my, my snow tires for. In, in New England winters lately, like we don't get that much snow. So for me, it's more about like, how do I put on an appropriate tire that's going to be entertaining and still you know give me good grip when it's cold? Great Volvo. And those, those wind track pros did just that, but they weren't as excellent as at digging you out of the crummy stuff as these things. Oh yes. I wanna drive like a big boy plow the zone behind us so we can, we can inspect. Look at that, how cool. Look at this. I mean, really, they're just accelerating. I mean, this has grip. You gotta remember you still need to be able to stop. Let's see, we'll go in here. This is deep, like this is unplowed. This is like proper snow. I'll prove it to you. Look at that. Look at that. That's the stuff. I'm not saying it's deep like it's feet deep, but it's deep enough that I'm probably just clearing with the lip. And I'm cutting through it like nothing. Climbing a hill. What I wouldn't do for a handbrake right now. Ugh, that would be nice. fully relying on mailboxes <laughs> right now to tell me where this road is but this is cool I mean we're in like some pretty virgin snow there is some tracks from one car but that's it there we go how cool and this should really just go to show like the right snow tires will prevent you from getting stuck and having issues, you know? And right now we're like descending and it's always scary when you've ascended something that was really snowy. And then you go down because you're just hoping, okay, let's hope that whatever is down here is escapable because we got to go back up. But honestly, confidence peaking right now. Fantastic. A little brake check. Car doing a good job stopping in a straight line. Tires doing a good job digging us back out. What more can you want? You can still have a tiny bit of fun. 
not the most entertaining thing in the world, but it's something. So my recommendation, if you're trying to go out and learn how to drive in the snow or you're not used to driving in really low grip scenarios, find safe places to do it. Look for places that don't have curbs or cars or telephone poles. Let me emphasize the curbs again. Look for places without curbs. It's really easy to go out and just destroy a car by sliding it sideways into a tall, immovable curbstone in a parking lot. What may have looked like a pretty happy place to slide around in because all you saw was a blanket of white may actually be just covering all of those little curbs at the end of every parking spot um, or little islands and things. You don't want to you don't want to mess with that. So just be really certain about where you do it. Um, I recommend doing it though because I, I'm not saying go out and cause havoc and 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 be a troublemaker, but it is a good idea to learn how your car behaves because remember every input matters. Anyway learn what input needs to be done to get you out of a scenario because for example if I like am turning and I get in the throttle I'm just going to understeer in this car it may not drag me out like I want it to because it's just going to push in a front wheel drive car we can use engine braking really nicely to slow us down. In a rear wheel drive car, you can do this, but if you've got a locking rear diff, limited slip, it can get a little squirrely because just like when you get on throttle and it starts locking that diff, getting off throttle, it can start locking that diff as well, which means that on the D cell, you may start going sideways. So just be aware that lifting off that throttle in a rear wheel drive car with an LSD can potentially put you into an oversteer scenario. I just love this. This is beautiful. You can hear it though. That's not a good thing. <laughs> when you start to hear the ticking of all the snowflakes, that means they're starting to freeze. And then that means that the snow may be turning from nice, happy, fluffy snow to kind of deadly, less pleasant freezing rain. It's something to be aware of at all times. It's 23 degrees outside right now. So we could go from wonderfully packed snow that I have good grip in to ice in a matter of not much time. And that's not a good situation for anybody. Ice is ice. I mean, unless you've got studded tires, you're pretty much SOL when it comes to icy roads. You're not gonna have grip. So you can, you'll can you have more grip, for example, on a snow tire just because it's softer, but it doesn't mean you're gonna have good enough grip to actually get the job done. So just be aware that a snow tire is still not going to necessarily solve all your problems. And that unexpected ice in the road is still a, a real possibility and a vulnerability that can send you into a very bad situation. Let me come in here real quick because I need to actually look at directions. I don't know where I am. I'm in quite unfamiliar territory. Sweet. I'm just so impressed by these tires. Look at that. I mean, yeah, there's still some slip, but I mean, you can carry a little speed, still have control over your vehicle. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for is to have control over your car. Look at that. We stopped on a hill, dragging ourselves out. Happy, happy. Good stuff. 
Go ahead and turn around in here. Looks like they're getting their mail totally fair, but maybe just clear off the rest of your car. It's fluffy, so I'm not really concerned about having stuff falling off the roof, but like, you know, if you're not clearing off your your windows, then you're lacking visibility, and that's a, that's a safety hazard. We don't need that. No device connected is false. <laughs> the infotainment system on this Type R is driving me up a wall. I am, I'm really not thrilled with it. It's just constantly leaving me in the dark. And my Lexus doesn't do that. So it's not the phone, it's not the connection. It's like whatever infotainment Honda has used in these cars is like either severely underpowered or just doesn't actually function with these phones. It's, it's so frustrating to have Apple CarPlay and not be able to rely on it. Don't know where the edge of this road is though. So we're gonna stay unable to connect. Thanks dude, appreciate that. All right, well, we are gonna pull over for a second and we have the ability to do that in this car because we have nice snow tires. All right, back to the old days. Whoop, ambulance. Ooh, that's a big curb. We don't want to hit that. That's the thing. You can you can do some serious damage to your car just like completely unknowingly and innocently, honestly. All right, plow came through while we were out. Good deal. It's funny. I feel more confident on that side of the road than this side of the road. I'd rather have a little bit of packed snow to dig my tread into than kind of the, the slick glaze of a freshly plowed piece of pavement. Go ahead, make the pass if you want it, man. This is a real bullshit move for you, but take it. I'll give you the Canyon etiquette, even though you're driving probably on crummy tires in a objectively very crummy car. <laughs> He's put his hazards on. Maybe he just wants to be a slightly speedier person. That's fine. It was a no passing zone at the time, but I let him go because in the event that he has crummy tires, he's tailgating me. So if I do have to slow down or stop, I'm the one who gets hit. I have no ego to prove to this person. I'm gonna slow down nice and early for our turn. Make sure no one is blowing through this stop sign. We're good. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for a little snowy drive. Cute puppy, I hope he's just out for a little pee and they're not just leaving him out there in the cold. Not nice, not nice, does not have a coat. Just his little fur coat. And I think we've proved that the Blizzak WS90s definitely are killer and that the Type R, although very capable and usable in these conditions, um, just not the most fun. Like, I would rather be sideways. I would rather be hooning a little bit. I don't need to hoon a lot, just a little bit, just a tiny little bit, just to play. A little bit of a bummer not to be hooning, but uh, here we are, functioning, safe, and I suppose that's what matters. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. And I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, let's see, how's this one? Nice. All right. Looks like we did good.